right guys, it's Michelle from Cozy Ag, and today is Monday, June 1st, 2020, and this is episode 89. Thanks for joining, um, it, especially if you are coming back. Uh, I want to welcome you back. Thanks for um, checking me out again. Uh, and if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for um, taking a look. Okay, so um, obviously I didn't record last week. Uh, like I mentioned with the holiday, things were a little, it was kind of a weird week. So I just decided to skip it. Um, but wanted to come back and um, trying to stay with you know, doing things a little more frequently, even if it's not weekly, I'm trying to just be a little more frequent than monthly, at least for, excuse me, for right now. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't even know where to start. So much going on. Um, So much going on. Okay, uh, so let's start with a couple of things. So even though I did not record uh, and post up a video, a floss tube video last week, um, I did finally get my um, my first video edited and um, uploaded for the haunted dollhouse and kind of what that journey looked like from the beginning. Um, I recorded sort of a brief little introduction, or well, you know me, it wasn't all that brief. Introduction, and then some clips that I pulled out of my um, mania vlogs uh, when I started work on the project. So that it was in its own, in its own video. Um, I have started a playlist on my channel and my intention is that as I add more videos to that, um, they will be, you know, tagged with the Haunted Dollhouse project um, so that if you're not interested in that, you can just skip those videos, but they will be in their own playlist. So if you want to go check that out, of course, I welcome you to do that. Um, I have a second video that is uh, ready to go and um, my intention is to, you know, it, it may be slow work, but as I move forward with it, uh, my intention is to continue to record um, my progress and um, some of the decisions that I'm making and kind of the process that I'm going through since I am kind of learning as I go. Um, so, but I was excited to finally get that first video up so that um, anybody that doesn't know about the project um, can certainly check that out. And anybody that needed a little uh, recap of uh, what went on with that, um, they had it. So, yeah, super excited about that. And um, like I said, I'll get that other one posted here. Um, you know, maybe next week, we'll see. So I wanted to kind of space them out so that they're not just, you know, right on top of each other. So, uh, so talked about the dollhouse video. And then the other thing that I have been working on is, you know, every week I sort of like tongue in cheek say show notes are up on my website, up on my blog, but they haven't been. And let's be honest, they haven't been for a while. Uh, I just, I sort of hit a, a snag and then got further and further and further behind. And then of course, as those things go, the more behind I got, the less inclined I was to work on it. But I have started working on getting the show notes updated and I'm working backwards. So, um, I do have those up on my blog, so anytime I mention a project, you know, a designer, if you want to know what fabric and threads that I used, if you need a link, etc., all of that is up on my blog. And there is a link to it in the down bar. Um, 
on right here on YouTube and then also at the end of this video there should be uh, the the link is right there in the video as well but basically if you go to cozyeggdesigns.com that is my website from there you can get to my cozy egg blog um, you can get to my cozy style blog you can get to my cozy life blog any of those things are all available um, on my cozy egg designs website as well as um, my cozy egg patterns or pattern as the case may be all of that's there so I've started with uh, working my way backwards and so there are show notes up for the Haunted Dollhouse video. There are show notes up for um, the last floss tube video that I did. And I've done three or four more after that. So I'm just going to work my way backwards until I get back to where I left off. Um, I am also taking a page out of uh, Nicole's Needleworks book. And I'm also inserting some photos in my show note blog posts so that um, if you're just looking at the blog post, you have some visual, you know, representation of what I'm, you know, which project I'm talking about. Um, but then also you'll have, you know, all of the info that I can give you based on what I talk about in my Floss Tube videos. So. Hopefully that will be helpful um, if for any reason there is uh, missing information or if you need to know something, please don't hesitate to reach out. There are a multitude of ways to reach me. Um, I did actually just, because I posted one, I actually had somebody um, uh, send me a message and say, you know, tell me what color you changed uh, your house to on his eyes on the sparrow. So when I do my show notes for, um, for this video, I'll make sure that I put that info in there since I hadn't specifically said so. Um, and I think actually in the one that I just posted yesterday, I may have put it, gone ahead and put it in there because the photo was specifically where I had started work on the house. So I think I mentioned it in there, but anyway, if there's anything that I'm missing, feel free to let me know. Okay, so uh, show notes, etc. Um, okay, and so obviously we're at the end of Stitch Mania. Uh, now that we're into June, I had a great Stitch Mania, which actually for me was Sampler Mania. Um, and it was sort of my own <laughs> twist on Stitch Sania. Um, you know, I kind of took a, uh, you know, took after what um, Emily C. Uh, was doing with, you know, having a focus project during the week and then on the weekend um, doing something different. Uh, so it worked really well for me. I really enjoyed it. I felt like I got a lot of progress in on my focus piece as well as on the pieces that I worked on on the weekends. A couple were new starts and three of them were whips. So I feel really good about that. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad that I took that approach. So it worked out, it worked out really well. Uh, the only problem that I had really, uh, which wasn't necessarily a fault of the way that I was doing my sampler mania, but because of the way that my weeks have gone lately, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays seem to be really hard. And so I wasn't making a ton of progress working on Sparrow Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And so by Thursdays, I don't know if it was just things sort of, you know, lightened up, uh, stress lessened, or perhaps I knew it was my last day to work on it for the week and I needed to like get my act together. But it seemed like on Thursdays of every week, I would finally get into a groove with it. And then I would be sad that I had to put it away for Friday. <laughs> so, what are you gonna do? Okay. 
So today I want to show you what I've worked on the past couple of weeks as well as kind of what my plans are coming up. Um, and then we're going to continue on with the whip parade. So I have bucket number two here on the floor and we're going to start diving into bucket number two. Is probably going to take more than one video. Just saying. But before I do that, I had some things come in the mail. So even though I like to kind of do stash enhancement a little bit later, I'm going to go ahead and do it up front. Um, and then we'll get into the whips and stuff. So there's not a ton of it. So, you know, if you want to fast forward through it, go like three minutes. <laughs> so, all right. So um, the first thing that I received in the mail was this chart by Birds of a Feather. This is the alphabet sampler. I've been in love with this for like a million years and I've seen it, everybody stitch it for years. I never purchased it, um, but every time I see somebody working on it, I just fall in love with it all over again. Um, recently, uh, Annette from Annette's Acre was stitching this and finished it and she was kind enough to pass this along to me when she was done. Um, I believe that uh, this may have been passed to her as well. So um, I need to figure out what fabric I wanna use and I wanna get this started sooner rather than later so that then I can pass it on as well. But I just, I don't know what it is, but I just absolutely love this piece. Of course it's birds of a feather and I love birds of a feather, but there is just something about this that I love. And of course, you know, with that color scheme, it could work on my gothic, gothic sampler wall as well as um, it could work on my bird wall. My, the, the bird wall and gothic sampler wall that are in planning stages. But I'm really excited for this. So thanks so much, Annette, for passing this along. I really appreciate it. So that is the first thing. The second thing um, that I received in the mail was some fabric. So you may recall that I've been on a little bit of a mission to get some fabric stash because I have zero fabric stash. Um, so recently, of course, seeing uh, so many folks talk about her fabric and then um, I had uh, several friends actually, you know, suggest to me if you love Lakeside You should give her fabric a try So I took a look at um, Victorian motto and her fabrics and she I believe just recently maybe recently ish decided to take three of her pieces that she had done for her club and make them stock colors. So, you know, I know that it would be cheaper if I joined the club. I just wanted to order three pieces of fabric. So that's what I did. Uh, so I paid a little more, but they're still super reasonable, super reasonably priced and they're gorgeous. Um, so, the three colors are, and I got 40 count uh, quarter yard of all three, of each of them. So this first one is um, Antique Sampler, and um, it's really, it's so pretty. These are all, you know, neutral sampler colors. Uh, this one is Vintage Sampler. This one is a little more gray. Really, really beautiful. And they have a beautiful, there's Zweigart based. Um, they have a beautiful hand to them. They have some modeling, but it is um, very subtle. Um, it's not kind of in your face. And then this last one is Parchment. And this is warm, um, a very warm tone and I will put all three of these up together so you can kind of see the difference between them 
So this one, the antique sampler, is probably what I would call the closest to lakeside vintage light exemplar. That's probably the closest thing that I could uh, compare that to. Um, it may be, well, it's pretty darn close to that. So, and then you can see uh, vintage sampler is a little more gray and then parchment is um, much warmer, more um, gold. Really pretty. So I am thrilled. They actually came much quicker than I expected based on all of the um, orders that she has gotten lately. Um, but I'm super, with those and um, so now I have those three pieces of fabric I have my 37 count Russian tea cake that I ordered um, and I'm just I'm thrilled and, and I'm I'm now at that point where it's like I have these beautiful pieces of fabric and I'm sort of paralyzed trying to decide what to stitch on them because there are so many choices so <laughs> I'm now gone from having uh, you know, lots of things that I want to stitch and no fabric to having fabric and too many choices of what to stitch on it. So, um, and I have these in a, uh, in a plastic bag temporarily until I kind of dig out where they, the bucket that they need to go in, but I wanted to protect them, but, uh, you do not want to, and there's my Berlin linen for my Raven, uh, you do not want to leave your fabrics in plastic bags for any length of time, okay? I can go into that more if you'd like me to, but um, I'll just leave that at that. Okay, so Victorian Mono fabric, and then um, uh, before I get to the next thing that I received, uh, so my guild, the Tudor Rose Guild, I've talked before that this is our uh, 20th anniversary year. And so at the beginning of the year, we got a, um, a beautiful exclusive chart designed by um, Janine of the Blue Flower uh, called the Tudor Bee, which I showed. Uh, she also designed um, another one called the Tudor Swan. Um, I do not have mine um, because I missed the March meeting because I was in Florida for work. Um, so a friend of mine picked mine up for me and it's at her house. <laughs> so, And uh, of course, at the time we were like, oh, I'll just get it from you you know, the next time I see you. Well, who knew that the next time I see her may be, you know, uh, three months, six months, whatever from now. So anyway, I can't show that one to you. But um, at our last meeting, um, I think it was the last meeting, it may have been the meeting before. I don't remember. I think it was the meeting before. I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, we received another gift, uh, which was um, a, another exclusive chart that was designed for us by Erica Michaels, who does uh, the strawberries um, that you have probably seen everywhere. She does a lot of silk gauze. She does those beautiful strawberries. Um, and so this was a, um, a Tudor strawberry. She actually took part of the um, an antique sampler that she had reproduced previously and used that to turn it into a berry for us. I don't have a photo of it. I just have the chart itself. Um, but hopefully at some point I can stitch that and show you what it will look like um, or what it does look like, I guess I should say. So we received that and then um, our next meeting is tomorrow evening and uh, the next um, exclusive chart that we have is from Beth Twist from Heartstring Samplery 
So that is actually in the mail to me. I'm hoping that I have it um, for tomorrow night, but um, fingers crossed. So, but we'll have our reveal tomorrow night um, on our uh, Zoom meeting. So I'm looking forward to that. And I will, of course, be sure to show you next time. So that's kind of fun. Um, the other thing I mentioned, I meant to mention this a couple of floss tubes ago, that one of the other cool things that we did with the Guild is that we were supposed to have Helen McCook of the Royal School of Needlework come and speak to us. Um, and of course, uh, she was unable to come, um, but we were able to um, set up a Zoom lecture with her. Um, and so she, uh, I, I, let me see if I can, if I wrote down what the topic was. It was like sampler motifs as they migrate through time and geography, something along those lines. Um, but it was really, really good. Um, she was uh, very knowledgeable. Like I said, she's from the Royal School of Needlework. Um, I didn't write it down. But... Uh, that was a lot of fun, um, and uh, it brought me back to, um, you know, our guild used to do, used to have a lot of lectures and programs where we learned about, you know, um, historical techniques and pieces and uh, that sort of thing. Um, and so it, it was, it, it really kind of pushed all of my art history, you know, buttons <laughs> and, um, very, very enjoyable. So we got to do that, which was fun. Um, yeah, so, uh, Eric and Michael. Oh, and the other thing that I have on the way that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned, um, Emily C in her last video showed a chart by, um, Not Forgotten Farm, um, that the, uh, it's a little pin cushion, that I believe is called melancholy. Um, and it's got some scissors on it and it says something like, you know, industry is the cure for melancholy or something along those lines. Um, but she and Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, are going to be doing a salve for that. And, I, you know, as soon as I saw her video, I was like, ordering. So that is on the way to me as well. And I'm going to, I think I have a little piece of Confederate gray, uh, th around here that it may fit on I'm hoping, um, uh, because I think that would be really great. And I don't want to cut into one of my big pieces of fabric because now I'm like a miser with my fabric. So, uh, that is on the way. It should be here. I'm hoping tomorrow. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And of course, a couple other charts that had to come with it. So I will show that to you when it gets here. All right, last thing. So, um, a little bit ago, Jill, who is uh, Swanky Sim on Instagram, uh, sent me a note and said, you know, hey, I saw this chart and it reminded me of you and I would like to send it to you. And I said, okay, sure, absolutely. So, um, so she, uh, the package arrived and of course at the time, you know, I looked at it and went, why is there a chart in a square box? <laughs> but... When I opened it, I was absolutely floored. Um, I, I I can't even. I posted this on my Instagram yesterday, but I can't. I can't even begin to express how how something that is such a thoughtful gift makes me feel so seen 
and heard, if that makes sense. Um, just really, really appreciative. So the first thing, so she sent this card and this is, uh, this is a section of Birds of a Feather Happy Heart Sampler, which I just started. Um, so, so, so super appropriate that she would choose this card um, out of any for me. Um, and then of course the, the sentiment inside that she wrote was just it, like, it made me cry, seriously. Um, and there were a couple of things in here. Um, I'm not gonna show you everything, but I will show you um, one of them. So, oh, and I'm unwrapping it, but it did have a nice little bow on it. Um, so I opened this up and this is what she sent me. It is a tiny little scroll frame and on it she has stitched this piece that of course says cozy egg and it has a little house on it and um, I believe this is one over one on 36 count and so the chart that she said she wanted to send me is the chart that this is based on that says cozy and it has a little house, a little, little alphabet. Um, but of course she changed it to say cozy egg. And then the house that she put on there, she made it the same color as my dollhouse originally was with the blue door and the white paint, the white exterior. Um, and she said that she wanted to add uh, windows on it that were you know, lit up to show, um, you know, that dream that I had as a child to have my house electrified so that I could have light in, in the house. Um, and I just, I just thought that was so, so thoughtful and so, such huge attention to detail. Um, and she also said that the red here is Lancaster red. Uh, which is a nod to uh, my Tudor Rose Guild. So just absolutely amazing. And she actually has it attached with Velcro. So if I wanted to um, switch this out for something else, I certainly could, but why would I want to? I just, I just can't even. So I took it out to the dollhouse and took a little photo of it um, sitting out there and it's definitely going to have a place of honor um, out there. So thank you, Jill. I can't, I can't thank you enough um, just for being so thoughtful and um, so generous with your time. So, okay. I'm trying not to cry. So, um, yeah, so that arrived and um, very sweet. Okay, so that is all of the things that arrived. So, Let's get into what I have been working on. Okay, um, let's start with, I'm gonna have to kind of rearrange here slightly. Okay, let's start with, excuse me, Sparrow. Okay, so here's where I'm at on Sparrow. This is His Eyes on the Sparrow by Heartstring Samplery. I'm stitching it with the called for threads, overdyed um, threads. I think it's a mix of gentle arts and crescent colors. Sorry, classic color works. Uh, on 48 count Gondor linen. Um, and because it's on 40 
eight count. I'm doing one over one, sorry, one over two, but because it's on 48 count, that's part of why my um, colors look so vibrant. Um, I did change my house to Mulberry, and I believe that the windows I changed to Caramel Corn, and I think the doors are toffee, which is in my show notes. All right, so, I got this bird done, this bird, I finished my cow, I did this, I did this little guy, and um, I may have done this guy too, and I brought my line across here, and then I've done the outline of the deer. So right here basically is the end of this page, so once I get the deer halfway filled in, um, then I will be done with page three. And basically right here is like the end, like this is where the other border is. So there's a big, you know, basket, there's a big peacock right here, but I'm almost to, I think page four is like a half a page. So I'm almost to the edge, which is great. Cause I feel like I just sort of got bogged down right here a little bit. But like I said, you know, Monday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays were sort of a wash and then I would work really hard on it on Thursdays. And I'd hoped to get that deer done, but that just didn't happen. So that's my plan for this week is to get that deer finished and get page three totally finished. So that's where I'm at. So I worked on that. So I worked on that a week and then I picked up Happy Hearts Sampler which is another one of these samplers that I have been in love with for a million years. And this was passed on to me as well. So um, I just love this. This is also Birds of a Feather. They just do the funkiest, coolest charts. Or used to because sadly, no more. Okay. Um, so this was a new start for me and I am stitching it on 40 count lakeside. I believe that it is sand dune. Let's see. Yes, 40 count sand dune lakeside linens. And I have some of the threads here. Obviously I have some problems with some of the threads here, um, but really pretty. Um, I had to use some DM, I don't know what's going on here. I had to use some DMCs, so I've got those on bobbins. Um, and this is my Red Deer, uh, thread key from Socks for Mom. So this calls for all week's threads, but like I said, I'd use some DMC. So here is where I'm at. And I started in the middle. I don't know why. Sometimes I start in the middle, sometimes I start in the top left. For whatever reason, I decided to start in the middle. And so that's probably accurate color-wise on the fabric, but I'm gonna pull it in. Um, so I basically worked on the alphabet. And I also got this little heart done. And then I started the outline of that big crazy flower that's over on the edge. So I started that. So, you know, the sampler is probably only this wide. 
give or take. And my needle minder, which of course my needle is now poking out of the back of my fabric. My needle minder is from Amy Baruch. And it's a heart on the Happy Heart Sampler. So, I really enjoyed working on this. I had fun with it. Um, I was working on it while we were watching Star Trek Discovery, um, which I had not seen. So we watched both seasons of it, as well as we watched Star Trek Picard, which was also excellent. Um, but so now every time I see this, I think of Star Trek. So. Um, I could, probably could have gotten more done, except that I was like watching the show. So, uh, so this was my Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I worked on this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And really glad that I got this started. Really looking forward to getting back to it. And this is in... Uh, a project bag also from socks for mom this is what my crown bird was living in um, and now happy hearts is living in there so so I worked on that Memorial Day weekend and then this past weekend this was you know the last uh, weekend of stitch mania and I had been kind of on the fence of, as far as what am I going to work on. This is my Parisville Tulip Pink bag. One of them. So I decided to work on Victorine Delacroix by the S. Sampler. Um, it had been a long time since I worked on her and that's just what I felt like doing. So here she is in all of her glory. And so I picked her up on Friday and worked on her through last night. And I was bound and determined to get to this navy blue basket because I just needed to. <laughs> but I really, you know, so much up in here is kind of the same colors, you know, the greens and the kind of rosy, khaki kind of colors. So I really wanted to get some of the blues in there. Um, and I'm saving, so this is all satin stitch, this sort of ribbon uh, border here. Um, I'm saving all of that for right now until I get a little farther, I think. So, and I may just wait until the end to do it. Um, I just don't want it to get you know, jacked up. So I'm going to show you on here what I worked on. Um, I kind of came over here and I worked, I started on this alphabet. I started on, these are Roman numerals that are right here. And I know this is tiny, so you can't really see it. These are Roman numerals over one right here. So I did that. And then this sort of bright turquoise line that you see, this is, um, two rows of queen stitches. I skipped that. And I wanted to jump down and get this flower done. So I did this flower and then worked on the blue basket. And I also came around this corner here and started um, to work my way down the side of the border. She tells you to start right here and so I had started here and sort of worked across a little bit. And so I just wanted to kind of round that corner. And here is where I'm at. And I'm using, I bought this as a kit. She does offer it on her site. Um, and I will have the link to it in the show notes. Um, she offers it as a kit. I believe she offers it with DMC or with silks. And um, I believe she also offers the chart only option. So this is where I'm at. I am using the kit fabric, like I said, it's 40 count. 
Um, I am using the silks. They are a Vera Soie, Soie, Soie d'Alger. And so you can see, you know, I brought my border around here. I started this alphabet and then I started this over one line, the Roman numerals. I skipped the, um, the queen stitches and then I did the flowers here and started on that navy basket. And I'm really happy with what I was able to get done. Um, and that fabric color is probably pretty accurate. So, I just love this piece. And these little trailing things, I just parked my threads for this over one bit um, because I wasn't gonna, you know, get all the way across because I wanted to get down here. So I just parked my threads. So I just love it. I love it. This is over one also. I had done that the last time I picked this up. Just really, really pretty. And I'm glad that I got her back out again and worked on her. Um, she's just really beautiful and so the uh, here's what I forgot because it's been a while since I worked on it um, the majority of this chart the majority of the samplers worked in marking cross which um, I'm going to show you this diagram so you can see you've got your X's just like a regular cross stitch but then you've got you know a vertical stitch or in some cases you have a horizontal stitch. Um, I had totally forgotten this because it's been that long since I started it and it's been that long since I worked on it. So I did not even realize that it was in something other than cross stitch until I started looking at the instructions because as I was looking at my blue, you know, the flower with the blue basket, it said 4A next to it. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? So I go and I look at the instructions and it's like, oh yeah, this should be marking crossover. Uh, should be marking cross as well. And I was like, hmm. So apparently when I started this, I made the decision not to use marking cross. I decided to just do regular cross stitch. I don't know. Obviously it's not a pure reproduction. I don't know, you know, if it loses something or gains something with the mark and cross, but that was apparently the decision that I made. Um, and I have all of my silks here. Really pretty. This is that navy. So beautiful. So, and, you know, I think I mentioned that I had my little notions bag that I was using that had like my glasses and my scissors and things like that in it this has actually been really helpful to just like pop in and out of a project bag and not you know not have to really worry about it as I was switching projects so that has been really helpful actually okay so that's what I worked on and so then tonight, of course, I will go back to Sparrow and working on it. And so plans, like I said, as soon as my melancholy piece comes, my intention is to join in that sal uh, with Emily and Diana, and I believe Michelle Bendy is doing it too. Um, so that's my intention. Um, since, you know, that last weekend for May, I was kind of torn between do I work on Victorine or do I work on Three Things Sampler? I do still want to work on Three Things Sampler. So I think that my next weekend, 
uh, either this weekend or the following weekend, depending on when we start the melancholy piece. I think that, uh, that I'm going to work on three things a little bit and give it a little bit of attention. Um, but for now, I'm just going to kind of go back to focusing on Sparrow and see if I can make some good headway on it. And it may just need some weekend time uh, to get some good progress because Monday through Wednesdays I seem to just be uh, zoning out. So, whip parade. Let's look at that. So, I realized that I had a second whip in this bag, which I did not show you. So obviously, well, not obviously to you, but this is an Ufendel that I started. And um, she is sharing a bag because of course she is. And what she is sharing a bag with Now that I have so much stuff in this bag, it's a little tight. She is sharing a bag with Long Dog Sampler's Moulin Rouge. I bought this when it first came out. And I will never forget the newsletter or blog post or something that I saw from Shepherd's Bush where they showed Moulin Rouge, and in the same post, I believe they showed and they send. And I was like, yeah, I gotta have both of those. So I bought and they send, and I bought Moulin Rouge at the same time. And this sat in my stash for a million years. And I finally decided a couple of Stitch Manias ago that I was just gonna start it because it's gorgeous plus Moulin Rouge so you know I had to stitch it I have the tiniest tiniest of starts on this I am using uh, Gloriana poinsettia or as my mom says poinsettia which is a beautiful beautiful red um, I didn't want it to be too dark. I wanted it to still have some of that vibrance, but I wanted it to have some variegation in it. So, poinsettia. Gloriana. So I am, that's what I'm using. And I am doing it on, I believe, antique white which I think is just a Zweigart plain Zweigart color and this is my itty bitty start and I know my lights kind of blowing out that way here there we go so that's my start I believe that this is I have no idea what count this is. I was just about to say 40 count, but I don't think it is. I think it's 32 count. Let's see how many threads I'm using. Maybe it is 40 count. it looks like I'm only using one strand. Maybe it is 40 count. What do I know? Really pretty. I'll have to go back and look. Yeah, so I basically started this for Stitch Mania one year and that was it. I haven't worked on it since then. And obviously this is something I really um, want 
to stitch and have finished, but it is just not a super high priority um, compared to some other things. I'll put it that way. So, but I love this one. Love it. But because it was in with Anne Ufendel, I forgot that it was in here. So. Didn't want to overlook it uh, in case anyone is um, keeping tabs on how many whips I have. All right. <clears throat> So that was not in the bucket. That was actually in my basket that sits on top of the buckets, which is kind of where I keep what I'm actively working on. The other piece, I don't think I showed this to you previously. This is also in my basket um, and it is in a fantastic uh, Harry Potter potions bag that um, my friend Karen made for me. And I do not have the, here's the inside of the bag. It's not fun. Um, I do not have the chart with me. All I have is my working copy. So this is Plum Street Samplers. This is an old piece of hers called From the Deep. And it has, uh, it's got a verse up at the top. It's like long and skinny. It's got a verse up at the top. And then at the bottom, it has um, basically a circle kind of made out of seaweed that has a mermaid in it. And I am just stitching the mermaid. I have a uh, circular frame that I want to put her in. And so I wanted to stitch a mermaid to put in that frame. I went looking for them. I found this chart um, and I posted on Instagram asking if anybody had it, that they would be willing to maybe let me borrow it. And someone sent it to me, uh, passed it along. So I am stitching this. Primarily, it calls for DMC, and I'm primarily stitching it in DMC. Um, actually, you know what? Before I say that, it calls for NPI. There is a DMC conversion. Um, I am using the DMC. I made a couple of color changes in her tail. Um, and the background that I'm stitching, I'm actually using the MPI because I had it. So here it is. And this is on Lamb's Wall, which we all know how I feel about it. So it's see-through. So let me put this behind me. All right, so I'm stitching this on Lamb's Wall. But it's gonna it's full coverage so you know other than the fact that it's annoying to stitch on what do I care um, and so this is where I'm at and I've just sort of basted you know approximately where I need to fill in so my circle is not super you know exact uh, but once I get her once I get all of that stitched then I'll test fit it um, with the frame before I you know, cut it out or anything. But I, I primarily worked on this during Magical Stitches, which is why I have my Slytherin needle minder there, which was a gift, and I have her in my Harry Potter bag. But all I have left is that fill-in. So um, it's pretty mindless to do, and, you know, I thought if I could get this out and just sort of, you know, Put some stitches in every day that would be great um, because I'd really like to get this done so um, yeah 
So from the deep, Plum Street Samplers. And that's in my whip basket that I work out of. All right, into the bucket. So the other bucket was primarily samplers. This is primarily everything else. So we'll see what we got. And it's all gonna be a surprise to me. This is my Raven bag. Love it. Here's the inside. And this is probably Dark October Stitching. Let's see what we have in here. A number of things, probably. All right. So, the first thing is... Uh, this, I'm calling her Trick or Treat Fairy to distinguish her between my other Halloween fairy. Um, I think this is Nora Corbett. Obviously, this is a black and white copy. This was originally in a magazine. I think you can actually download this now from some site, I don't know where. Uh, but when I do the show notes, I'll see if I can figure that out. Legally download that site. Uh, I am stitching this on, I believe this is 32 count Silk Weaver. And I think this color is called Phantom. I think this is an old silk weaver. Old, old, old. But that's pretty accurate color. So you can see I've got her bodice done. I am starting to kind of work down towards her skirt. I do not have any of the Krynic for this, so that sort of limits me on what I can do. But I haven't worked a whole lot on this because I'll be honest, there was, I just was like, I'm lost in a sea of 3371 and cannot possibly do any more of this. And I'm using DMCs for this. Now it calls for Mill Hill Bees, I think. And I actually went through and did my own conversion to Delicas. Um, I don't have all of the ones that I need, but these were the first ones that I picked up. Um, these are size eights and this these are size 11s these are the size you normally see these are a little bit bigger so i just converted them to delicas i've worked with delicas on my chatelaines and i just prefer those and i am not going to use krynic i'm going to use uh, petite treasure braid so I just need to convert those and then purchase. So that's that. And as you can imagine, this probably only gets worked on around dark October. Um, but certainly a candidate for um, Dark 13 stitching. All right, and then, again, no chart. This one is Casting a Spell Blackbird Designs. This is the one that goes in the box that has the glass lid, that has all the little compartments. And I'm doing mine in a different colorway. So this fabric is, I believe, 32 count oyster. This is also an old 
silk weaver old silk weaver um, so it's kind of gray you can see but it's got a little bit of kind of a tan uh, every so often there um, so I did change my colors and instead of using uh, it calls for like that 3371-ish kind of, you know, color and orange and whatever, I don't know. Maybe two colors of orange, I don't remember. And I didn't love that colorway. So I totally switched mine to the colorway that is used in uh, another chart of theirs called Raven Bewitched and I saw that uh, I saw a finished piece at my local needle workshop that was being framed and so one of the owners was actually pinning it for framing and I was like what are those colors because in the in the photo of that chart even on the cover photo it's hard to see the depth of the colors and it I always just assumed it was just black, but it's not. Um, so it calls for uh, wood trail, um, a black, which I'm using uh, a limited edition called Nightmare, uh, which is sort of a bluish black, current, and um, old purple paint the problematic old purple paint, which is no longer purple. Um, so that's what I'm using and I really love it. But um, part of the reason that my chart is not in here is because since I am changing my colors, I wanted to actually kind of figure out where I'm going to use which colors for the next blocks. Um, so that I have kind of a good mix of them. And it was making my brain hurt to try to figure it out as I was going. So um, I thought I would just, you know, sort it out and go from there. So casting a spell, that's what's in here. And I'm already at the one hour mark, so I don't know how much of this bucket we're going to get through. Obviously my dark 13 or my dark October stitching is all on top. Okay. And I showed you this one not too long ago. This is mini jewel scarabs. Um, by Dimples Designs. This is one of those Professor Fisbee's Wondrous Strange Collection. Um, and so I started this one dark October and I'm not thrilled with it. So you may recall we talked about possibly restarting this on a different fabric, which I think I'm going to do. Um, you know, it's over one. There's some Krynik in there. I've made a mistake someplace. I do love it. I do want it on my wall in the map room with my other curiosities. Um, but, oh, and there's all that. I don't love that fabric, so I think that's probably going to be a restart. The pile is shifting. Lady Jeanette, <laughs> this is a bag that I made myself. It is a zipper bag. Just love it. This was a panel that I bought in Paris at the needlework market. And this houses the infamous Halloween neighborhood. 
So here's where I'm at. So for anybody that doesn't know the story, this was originally a round robin where we were stitching neighborhoods and I decided to do a Halloween neighborhood. Um, my piece was kept and then I had to send a second piece out. This was the second piece and I was just so disgusted with it by the time that I got it back that it sat in the closet for a very long time. So I have since got it out and I've started filling it in um, and I am in love with it once again. So I have added the tree and these three witches and this witch up top. I have added, this is a Lizzie Kate house. I added this bright needle, Ghosties and Ghoulies house. This was my original block, was uh, the cemetery block from Village of Hawk Run Hollow. I added this cemetery down here, which is a Milady's Needle piece. I added this freebie from the Primitive Needle called By the Light of the Moon. And um, obviously I still have a ways to go to fill this in. But I have been, you know, figuring out what I want to put in the rest of the spaces. Um, it's just a matter of stitching them. And I have like, this is my set of charts that I'm working from. These are all working copies of, you know, a bunch of different <laughs> charts. Um, some are, uh, some are, um, ornaments from like the Just Cross Stitch ornaments and some are uh, pieces of other charts etc. Um, so that's what I'm working with. And so the next one that I have planned to stitch is one called, um, which I think is, yeah, it's a Chessie and Me called Hallow We House. Um, and I pulled some threads for it. I pulled this green. This is a needle necessities. This gold and fragrant clothes. And I think I need a black. So, um, this is, you know, high on the list to finish. Um, and I am in the midst of charting out. I want to have like a roadway, like a pathway through the neighborhood. So I'm in the process of charting that out as well. Okay. This is an old one. This is, this was a limited edition kit from the Silver Needle. Um, and this is a Just Nan piece that tells you anything about how long I've had this because I really don't stitch Just Nan anymore, but this is called the Queen of the Needle Sampler Case. And that's a picture of it. And it is on that pink and white gingham fabric. And it is like the frilliest, girliest thing ever, ever. I used to be a huge Just Nan stitcher so um but i will probably finish this it's just not high on my list whatsoever here are the threads and here is what i have so far so i think this is like the front and the back of the case. And I literally could not tell you when the last time was that I worked on those. No idea. And 
and this is in one of my container store bags. This is in my architecture bag. This is the bag that actually I used to have my uh, my dad's memorial sampler in. That's the first project I put in there. That's the inside. And so whenever I get this out, I think of that sampler. Okay, so this is a this is a Catherine Theron workshop that I took. I think this was maybe one of the first workshops I ever took with the Guild. And I got this out a few years ago to work on it as a sal with some friends. And as with every sal I have ever been a part of, I um, abandon it because that's the way I roll. So this is, my name's on it. This is Williamsburg Remembered by Catherine Theron. There's the inside and the outside of this little needle case thing. Um, and there's a lot of specialty stitches in this, so I was really intimidated by it. Um, but this is where I'm at. So I'm working on the front and the back of the case. And yeah, there's not a whole lot that I have done. I have a basting line up here, just ignore that. But then that green line underneath it is uh, kind of the outline of the case. And I had just started to put in my alphabet. So, one of these days, I will get back to this. It's really beautiful. It's just one of those pieces that um, it requires a bit of brain power to think through and um, some concentration. So, and it has some really pretty... Um, what you call it, scrim, scrimshaw pieces that are made out of old piano keys. I've got two pieces that I took the same weekend. There's the scrimshaw pieces for one. I think this is for what you just saw. And then the second set is that little bird so anyway one of these days I'll get around to that so Catherine Theron, Williamsburg, remember. All right, um, this is in a uh, project bag that Sylvia made for me for our exchange last year. doesn't want to cooperate. All right, and this is, this is on 32 count murky. This is uh, Barbara Anna, is it Black Cat Hollow? I think that's one of those, Black Cat Hollow. That I started as a stitch along with Emily and Tracy P. And maybe Trisha. So that's what I have. 
And this is on 32 count marking. Did I say that? I love it. I love the way it looks on this marquee. I wish I'd done it on 40 count because I do not like stitching on this 32 count. It's really coarse and rough. Um, it doesn't have the feel of regular linen to me. It just feels weird. Uh, and I was contemplating adding in an over dyed for the grass, so I pulled bean sprout and I pulled pea pod. And I thought I might try that for that big chunk of grass down there. So I enjoy this. I think I had this out last October. Um, so this will get some love for sure. I just wish that I had started on a different kind of fabric because I don't love this. But I love the way it looks on that fabric. I think this is probably going to be the last one because we're at over an hour. All right, this is a Mamalee bag from Emily that she made for me out of these beautiful Egyptian uh, prints. I love it, love it. And of course, what did I put in it? My birthday start that year, which was Egyptian Garden, Chatelaine. I do not have a photo of the whole thing. I just have like my million charts in it. And I am stitching this on also an old silk weaver. I believe this is 32 count days gone by. And there's my start. And that is also a needle minder from Miss Emily. So there's my start. I started this on my birthday a couple years ago. And um, I've worked on it since then. I worked on it for Magical Stitches. These little fish here are all over one. And they have like all this petite treasure break in there with them. Um, this whole center is all beaded. And everywhere that you see in the rest of this center is also all beaded. So that will happen at the end. But I sure love it. I wanted a sand color. Um, and so I saw someone else at the time had done this uh, on days gone by and so that's why I purchased that and it's um, it's a good size piece it's a big piece uh, this one I think this may have been the first online class uh, you know it wasn't it was like not a mystery it was You know, you got the whole thing at, a, at one time. And I have, so it calls for a mix of DMCs and silks and petite treasure braid, etc. So, some of the colors, colors. I love it. Um, but uh, after finishing Mystery Nine, I needed a little bit of a Chatelaine break, but I did work on this for Magical Stitches um, a good bit and got that center pond finished. Okay, we're going to call that done. I guess there's a whole lot left in this bucket. All right, so, excuse me, Egyptian Garden, Chatelaine Designs. 
Emily bag. Um, yeah. All right. We'll call it. We'll call that good for tonight. All right. Um, so we'll continue on with the rip, whip parade the next time I see you. And eventually we'll get through all of them. All right. Um, thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate your comments and um, you watching and subscribing and all that good stuff. Uh, just really, really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, I'm getting those show notes updated so um, that you have something to go look for if you need information. Um, but you're always welcome to certainly ask. Um, but that way it's all in one place. And eventually I'll get the rest of the backlog done. But I intend to keep up with them going forward. So, all right, guys. Um, well, my intention is to be back next week. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And... Um, Thanks again for joining and happy stitching. Bye.